Hi, this is Ruben Lara, and today I'll be showing you a small set of Clip Studio paint brushes I like to use to achieve an oily dry brush effect. Something along the lines of what you see here. This is a little painting I made of a Boston Terrier who desperately wants to be a Dalmatian fire dog. But you can see that there's a lot of nice syrupy strokes in here, painterly brushwork, as well as some really nice dry brush edges to some of these paint strokes. It's important to get into the right mindset when trying to emulate a traditional look with digital tools. Sometimes we're looking for the one magic brush that does it all, but I find that it doesn't exist, and it isn't even really the case when working traditionally. An oil painter may use many different size brushes, a palette knife, even a rag, to achieve a loose painterly style that gives the impression of detail rather than the direct execution of it. Now what we're looking for are brushes that can give us two distinct edges, hard and soft. And it's kind of like what you're seeing here. We're having a nice hard edge on this one and a soft or lost edge here in the beginning and end or even on the sides. Right? We see it again here in all of this brushwork, hard to soft or found to lost edges. The combination of a lost and found edge creates a painterly effect. It also helps guide our eyes to important focal points like the face or the tip of the tube so that in these important areas we may have a high concentration of hard or found edges. And in the least important parts, we may have a higher concentration of lost or soft edges. The same thing happens here on the paint tube. So I'm wanting to guide people to the face and the tube of paint with the right balance of lost and found edges. So one way to make sure our painting has both lost and found edges is by collecting brushes that express both well. So I've assembled a short list of brushes I've been using recently. Three of them I've purchased and the others I've created, but you'll notice that they're there only to accomplish those two things, create found and lost edges, and that the perfect painterly digital brush stroke can easily be controlled and even sculpted into your piece. So let's go over those now. I should start by saying that if you're really going for a traditional look, get into the habit of painting over a photographic canvas texture. This particular one I've pulled off FZM canvas textures, Fuzzimo. I've used them a few times and they're free high-res canvas textures that can be used as is, but they also have a folder of seamless textures that you can use as well. All right, let's get into these brushes. Make a new layer here. One of the best brushes in Clip Studio is the oil paint flat brush that Clip Studio comes with. It just blends really nicely right out of the box and again, I'm hitting my Option key or the Alt key on Windows uh, to just kind of color pick in here. I like to use this around 90%. At 100%, it can be just basically completely opaque, which obviously is at 100%. But at around 90%, I feel like I'm getting some of these transition colors that I can repick, you know, to blend. Even if I'm way out here with a, you know, with a stronger uh, contrasting color, at 90%, I'm getting mid-tone and transition colors that I can continue to pick from and just paint. Notice this transition I'm just achieving completely with this opaque approach. I'm just picking and picking and picking until I have a nice um, transition between, you know, maybe a hard edge there and uh, it just kind of goes into a soft lost edge. The same thing might happen out here on the canvas, right, as I kind of just move out to, to a lost edge like that. So the oil paint flat brush is really handy and it has a nice uh, flat chisel to it, which I really like. Next is this cat's tongue brush, which is basically a duplicate of the oil paint flat brush, but allows me to just to taper the edge just a little bit on the front and back ends of that stroke. So it's just not so flat. So the only thing I've done is if we go into the subtool details on brush size, the oil paint flat brush has input affecting the brush size as pen pressure so that we do get a little bit of that taper. But on the cat's tongue, I've just reduced the minimum value to about 12% and then just adjusted this curve just a little bit so that it gives us a little bit of, a little bit more of this tapered, uh, this tapered look as I paint. So that feels really good. The next one is a set I've purchased off the Daub color pack. An excellent set of tools for Clip Studio and Manga Studio Daub brushes. They have a ton of different packs here. I recommend just getting uh, the super bundle it has tons of brushes in there 
it can be a little overwhelming as well. As you can see here, it comes with all of these brushes here, some beautiful inking tools and some watercolor tools as well. The ones I've isolated out, I feel are the best ones for this particular look. And I can easily get overwhelmed by having way too many brushes, whether it's in Photoshop or Clip Studio. So I've tried to pull out just the top three that I feel achieve the look I'm going for. And those are found in the inks and pigments. And the one I'll be using is Ink Tapered Raw. This is a good reminder to not let the title of a brush mislead you into only using it for that application. So this is obviously in the inks and pigments folder, and yet here we are doing a traditional media brush tutorial. So you really want to look at the effect that a brush has and use it to your advantage. The other one I'll be pulling out is in the Pigmento series, Pigmento 10, as well as the Bristle Broom brush, which is actually a blender in the dry media. So you could nab all of those packs separately, but I just recommend getting the Super Bundle. It's a lot of fun. Okay, so let's start with the ink tapered raw brush. I like to use this at 100% and it kind of approximates the look of the cat's tongue, but it just has this really nice uh, dry brush texture at the end and you see that they've uh, basically created, there we go, brush tip, this really nice scan off of some natural media and combined it with some special scans of watercolor paper as well. Anyway, you can make this on your own, but it's such a reasonable price that I recommend just buying it. Mixes nicely as well. Flat Ribbon Vertical is one that I've created. And let me just grab a darker color here. The effect is that it has a nice vertical chisel. It does not follow uh, the direction of your stroke, but when you move across, it just gives a nice disrupted, almost like a palette knife type of feel. I really like it. Um, so again, you see me kind of combining colors here just to kind of give that idea of, you know, multiple colors on the paintbrush. And that is simply a texture that looks like that with some specific settings. Flat ribbon is pretty much the same as flat ribbon, ribbon vertical, but in the brush tip settings, the direction is set to direction of line. And so what that achieves is that that texture is being wrapped around and follows the brush stroke. So that's really handy to have a kind of a big broad brush that achieves that look. Flat ribbon horizontal is pretty much similar to flat ribbon vertical, except it gives us some nice hard edges there and of course has a nice flat texture going down this way. This one also has, I believe, some brush size settings applied there, which you know I'll often kind of turn on and off depending on what I'm doing. Flat Ribbon Soft is essentially the same thing as Flat Ribbon, except I've added a few more textures in there that came from the Clip Studio materials library. And again, I'm looking for brushes that are gonna give me some unplanned, spontaneous edges, and that's gonna be the key to achieving a little bit of this dry brush look. If I use my mouse, you can see what Clip Studio is doing with these patterns. I'm just, I just clicked once down, and I'm just starting to drag. And you see that texture is the third one on the list. Then the next texture that appeared is the first one. And then the next one appeared is the last one. And then the next one is the first one. So it's kind of randomly applying as many textures as I have loaded up into that list. And I can add as many as I want, I think, <laughs> until it just starts to slow down. But it really is randomly kind of shoving them in there. And it's giving us these really nice terminal shapes that I think I would have a hard time painting in, and that's one of the nice things about a dry brush look, is it is a spontaneous, unplanned edge, and that's going to be creating that lost or soft edge that we're looking for. The next one is Flat Ribbon Soft, except I've added just a little S bracket, and it's the exact same thing as Flat Ribbon Soft, except with the addition of the size being affected by pen pressure. So this is just one where I just wanted a little bit of a taper at the end of that. So you see by experimenting with the pressure of your pen on either the size or the density of the textures, you can really get a nice variation, a controlled plan variation on just a few brushes, as long as you know what they're doing and how they're different. I'm gonna skip Pigmento for a second. Smoke is another one that just has a, I'm gonna go up to 100% here, just has a real nice, um, unexpected edge to it 
you know and again it's called smoke but it doesn't have to be used for smoke I've used this for you know trees and just kind of shoving I'm just quickly shoving that brush right up and out and you really get some nice unexpected results that way and this is another one that's just called texture that does something similar so again you don't have to use these brushes you can see that you can create your own and I have a little tutorial in my clip studio paint basics video on YouTube for free that describes how to create a brush out of a black and white shape and the details of that. Uh, Pigmento is a really interesting brush from the Dob set and let me just make this a little larger. You can see that it forces a shadow right into the paint color which is really neat. It can be tempting to paint directly with this one but I find that as I'm painting I'm often you know color picking intermediate colors like I mentioned before but as I keep picking colors I'm almost invariably going to be picking that black shadow color which is obviously what I don't want so I have a hard time keeping the color pure and clean as much as I'd like to but this brush can have a really interesting usage and I show that in my simple dry brush technique tutorial on gumroad.com so head on over there to check that out ultimately one of the ways I use pigmento 10 and there's a whole uh, set of sizes in, is in the pigmento series is at really low opacity so if I drop this to about 20 percent and I pick a color over an existing stroke and just kind of stroke on top of it what I end up getting is a nice shadow color that augments an existing brush stroke so again we're talking about let me bump this up to 20 percent for example we're talking about sculpting brush strokes carefully and in a planned way that approximates the digital uh, the traditional workflow i can do it even on one of these get a little smaller there and this cat's tongue brush I might come in here and you know color pick that and just find some um, areas where you know, I want that paint to be a little bit thicker. So the Pigmento brush series at low opacities I find works really well. I also show you how to use the Pigmento brush series to scumble in an underpainting in the simple dry brush technique video, which I think you'll appreciate. All right, let's just do a little more theory in terms of what we're looking for in a brush stroke. So what we're looking for is the transition between lost and found edges. And when we say lost, right, we're also meaning soft and hard edges. And that's gonna be the mindset that we wanna keep in mind as we're building this brushwork. Now there's three ways to get from a lost edge to a found edge. One is starting with lost and moving to a found edge, starting with a found edge and moving to a lost edge, either with a brush or with a blender. So let's do the first technique. I'm going to go to my oil paint flat brush and let's just grab a nice uh, gray color. I'm going to drop down to about 60% and maybe just lay in um, kind of a, an undertone here over the canvas. All right, bump up to 100%. And again, I've set my opacities to my keyboard keys. If you want, want to learn how to do that, then make sure to check out my Clip Studio Paint Basics free YouTube video that shows you how to map opacities to the number keys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. And that approximates the Photoshop workflow a little bit more. All right, so let's say I have, uh, you know, some, let me get back on my oil paint flat brush, back up to 90%. And I have laid in some orange color here and I'm just, you know, making a transition to some kind of shadow color. So I'll drop my my darkness there. What I'm painting with is a lot of uh, found edges, right? They're hard edge brush strokes without a lot of dry brush lost edges. Now I can start just painting in lost edges as I showed you down here by you know color picking transition colors all the way down and that approximate a lost edge. But I can also go through and just lay down um, maybe just a local palette of colors that I'm going to move into a lost edge transition. So I'm just laying down local colors and even if I have, let's just turn this into an orange here, let's do a little darkness there and then we say, okay, there's a little bit of a you know highlight there. Then I can go to one of my lost edge brushes and then very easily just start color picking this 
and then finding those nice transitions. So again, I'm not relying on one special brush to accomplish it all. I'm laying down some local color and then finding opportunities right, to get this nice lost edge. This ink taper raw brush, I find I'm using often at these really large sizes because it's kind of there that we're getting these really nice um, spontaneous you know, edges. So even though I'm, I'm painting at a, at a small scale compared to the brush size, uh, as, I, as soon as I start pushing this brush around, it just really starts giving us some nice uh, transition colors there. So in this case, we started with a found edge and moved into a lost edge, right? We can also start the other way and start with a lost edge and move to a found edge. So let's say I'm uh, working on this highlight here and I'm on my ink tapered raw and let me just make this a little bit smaller now. And I kind of you know, express a very rough lost edged brush, brush stroke. I can always come in with my oil paint flat brush and then you know, find that little hard edge that I'm looking for. Even this little transition that I'm doing here, you know, can be considered a hard edge because I'm looking for that contrast in shape into a brush stroke that disappears a little bit. So starting with hard, moving to soft, or starting with a found and moving to a lost edge, or vice versa, works both ways. And there's not one right way to do it. It depends on what your subject matter is and if you're maybe laying down color in a very plainer way. I tend to start with a lot of found edged planes just so I can understand what the shape of my subject matter is. And then I have a lot of fun finding those lost edges where I need better transitions. The other way to turn a hard edge or a found edge into a lost edge is through the blending tools, right? So I might grab, um, let's just lay down some color here. And I'm gonna hit J. Clip Studio comes with a beautiful blender called Soothing Watercolor. Again, don't be fooled by the name because we're using it here for kind of an oil painting look. But look how nicely this blends these two tones. And again, maybe I don't wanna blend this whole thing out. I'm looking, I wanna celebrate these nice little hard edges that turn into a lost edge like that, right? The third daub brush that I really like to use is the bristle broom. And even though it's in the brush folder, I like to move it into the blenders folder so that when I hit J, I have access to it as a blender. But it basically does the same thing as soothing watercolor, except it has a nice tooth to it. So it doesn't completely blend it out as much, as smoothly as the soothing watercolor. Again, for different uses. So in this case, I might grab you know, some of the shadow color and just kind of pull that out. Again, I have a found edge moving to a lost edge. I can pull this into the highlight, or I can uh, pull that highlight out. I can uh, maybe take the back end of this and you know, start to de-emphasize it. And I might start with something like that and decide you know, to blend a little bit of that out more, like if I'm using a rag maybe. So even within that lost edge, I'm finding opportunities for contrast, a more harder contrasty lost edge into a softer one. And if I finish off with my, my Daub Pigmento brush, I'm gonna grab that color, drop to 20%, maybe 10% even, just find some opportunities in here for some, uh, some Pigmento style brushwork. I'm using this usually around 10 or 20%, just to get a little bit of that feel. Definitely can be overdone, and I'll usually come in and kind of just blend out some of these edges again. Uh, just to get rid of some of that, you know, sameness that any digital brush has. So there you go. That's a small brush set and easy to implement technique I like to use. So how can you put this into practice? Well, head on over to gumroad.com slash rubenlara and I put together a very instructive tutorial called Simple Dry Brush Technique on the making of this painting, Equal Opportunity Fire Dog. It's by no means the only way to get painterly results, but I think it's simple. It uses only a few brushes, and more importantly, helps you understand a method and mindset when going for a traditional look. I also show you how to set up a canvas texture using a repeating image tile, 
and include the brushes I made that I used in this demo, except for the Daub brushes, which you'll have to get from those awesome folks at Daub, all for the price of a hamburger. These are some methods you'll be using over and over, so I'm excited to share them. Well, I hope this was helpful, and remember that good art doesn't rely on the perfect brush system or painting tool, but on your creativity and storytelling. Have fun.